All right, this is an interesting story and really just bodes poorly for a company called NetEase Games. They are a Chinese video game company, and they... <laughs> Someone at their company, or multiple people, in the as it seems, might have just screwed any chance NetEase Games has to work with Nintendo, especially in terms of releasing their games on Nintendo Switch, which is a big deal for these smaller companies that might make mobile games and stuff like that, because Switch has got a massive market for indie games. A lot of indie games, high-quality ones, sell very, very well. And it appears they might even have a high-quality indie game uh, in their... In their library, because it appears that a bunch of fans were accusing NetEase Games of essentially ripping off Breath of the Wild with one of their recent releases on smart devices, Operation Wind Cloud Island. Now, this game is not available in my area on our app stores, so I have not been able to try it out and confirm these allegations. We do have... Uh, a screenshot here, but the screenshot's kind of vague. I know it kind of looks like selfie mode from Breath of the Wild. Fire, a guy holding up a peace sign, blah, blah, blah. But that's not enough to really say that this is a Breath of the Wild ripoff. But even if it was a Breath of the Wild ripoff, that would still be highly impressive. And it's okay for games to draw inspiration and kind of sort of be ripoffs as long as it's not blatant. Like, you don't see Link and Gorons and Zora running around in this world, right? And it appears to only happen on a single island, whereas, obviously, Breath of the Wild is this massive game. Anyways, setting that, that aside, because I can't confirm uh, any of these allegations myself, what I can talk about is NetEase's response to these allegations. Now, you would assume there is really a, a few ways to go in responding. One, you could just choose not to respond at all because maybe it's true and you don't want to light the, you know, you don't want to fuel the fire, and uh, whatever. You just want to leave it alone and just let people think what they think and, and move on. There's a lot of people that think a certain other indie game is a ripoff of The Wind Waker. It's not. It's different enough, but you know that's just the way fans are. You know, it looks like another game, therefore it must be that game, right? So we'll see what happens with this game if it ever comes out in the U.S. But what NetEase, someone at NetEase Games, we don't know who, uh, went on one of their social media accounts. In China, they use an application called TapTap. Tap. Uh, it's one of the biggest social media um, applications they have in China. And they went on that smartphone app to essentially fire back at consumers because uh, obviously they can go back and forth like a Twitter, like a Facebook you know, business page, etc. And you would think if you're going to say anything about this situation, you're going to talk about how your game is fundamentally different from Breath of the Wild, right? That That's at least what makes the most sense to me. But that's not what happened. What did happen is NetEase went on to bash Nintendo fans. He said things like Nintendo fans don't consider mobile games to be true games, and that's why they're criticizing the game. So basically they're criticizing it because it's a mobile game. They are saying that PC games are vastly superior to essentially any Switch game. It doesn't matter what Switch game you're talking about. All PC games are better. Then they started also basically name calling switch fans saying a lot of words that i don't even want to repeat here they're, they're, they're pretty nasty about it and for some reason even though uh obviously it felt like it was nintendo fans bashing their game they for some reason started bashing playstation 4 fans as well i don't know why i don't know if there was a vendetta there with this particular staff member anyways it obviously doesn't look good it's a company coming out publicly and just attacking consumers that's not ever going to go over well uh, that's terrible PR, and that's a way to end your company in a hurry. However, it does appear that someone else at NetEase obviously eventually saw that this was happening, and they deleted all of the the posts, all, all of the things that had anything derogatory said towards Nintendo or PlayStation fans. And then they decided to kind of sort of apologize in a way, but not really. They kind of tried to pass off what they said as a joke. Haha, ha, funny, it was just a joke, we were just joking around. Yeah, derogatory names and um, the, the very blatant biases you were trying to claim everyone has. That's, that's funny, nice joke. Uh, but what makes it worse is as they tried to pass it off as a joke, and then they were talking about how we actually are all really big Nintendo fans, um, and to prove that, here is an image we took of our switch and some of the games we have and in the image you'll as you're seeing now you see you know some labo creations and you're seeing 
you know, Odyssey and a stack of games there. It looks like there's Splatoon 2 in there, one to switch. Uh, some other stuff you're seeing. A switch there that has like those little uh, paw things put on the sticks. And you would think things kind of end there, right? Like, okay, yeah, this was a really bad uh, PR situation. Someone, instead of saying that they were wrong and apologizing, tried to pass it off as a joke and said, here's some proof. The problem with that proof is this is the internet and they should have known better. Um, I don't know why they didn't just go out and buy a Switch and at least fake it. Um, it turns out this image is actually from a completely different outlet on the internet. and was posted a long time ago. So they basically took an image from another outlet, claimed it was their own to prove how much they like Switch, and it was actually a lie. So not only did they come out and bash Nintendo fans and then try to pass off that bashing, and PlayStation fans, let's be fair, and try to pass off that bashing as a joke, they then turned around and lied about how big of Switch fans they are by faking an image that isn't theirs. Um, this, the only reason this even matters, because this, this is just, you know, you could probably find this situation a dime a dozen with certain indie studios that, you know, people just can't handle the criticism, can't handle the heat. They got to respond. And I know what that's like. I've been caught up in the wind of, of responding to people that I probably shouldn't be paying any attention to. Although, um... I think I've learned over the years that, that resorting to attacking them as people, attacking their beliefs, attacking their um, their opi their personal opinions on video games uh, is something that I have learned to kind of back off on. But, you know, in my younger years, it was, it, it was probably an issue when I was a kid. Uh, not that I can remember any specific situation that cropped up, but there's there's probably been times I've, I've, I've been this way. The thing is... That this company wanted to work with Nintendo on future projects. The president himself came out a while back, like back in 2017, and mentioned how they wanted to work with Nintendo on future projects. So basically, in the, they wanted to bring future games to the Switch. That, that was their long-term goal. Um, after this entire situation, I'm not so sure that Nintendo is going to approve of them. Granted, it didn't look like they were approved to develop for Switch anyways as is, but with this whole situation, it's going to be tough for Nintendo to look at it as, oh, so you attacked our fans and attacked Sony fans and then lied about how big a Switch fans you are and now you want to put games on Switch? I mean, obviously, why anyone wants to put games on Switch is about making money. The same reason Nintendo even made Switch, even makes anything. It's all about making money, but... It's one of those things where you can't allow a company that's blatantly attacking your own consumers um, to just come on over, especially when they then turned around and lied to those consumers about how big a Switch fans they are. And this is the thing. I'm not claiming that people at NetEase, there's not people within the company that aren't big Switch fans. I don't know how big the company is. Is it two people? Is it four people? Is it ten people? Is it a hundred people? I have no idea. But what I do know is they are very disingenuous. Um, they lied right to people's faces. And this is just not good. This is not good. I Stories like this I, I think are a little funny because like NetEase is destroying themselves before they even get an opportunity to do anything on Switch. You know, they're basically destroying their own marketability on Switch. Even if Nintendo overlooked everything and approved them, it's going to be hard to show support to a company that so openly went after the very consumers they're trying to sell products to. Um, and, you know, you, you combine this with following up, you know, the Phillips story from IGN and how he stole stuff and then these guys stole an image. I, I don't, you know, these stories I think are a little interesting, but they're also a little sad. I kind of wish that, um, obviously the Phillips situation is entirely different because we're talking about stealing someone else's work and claiming it as your own and getting paid for that and stuff like that. And I don't know if anyone was being paid for these, these social media posts and it's in China. So I don't, you know, I don't really know the laws and all that, but what I do know is that in, in this case, sometimes the best thing to do is not say anything at all. Whether or not your game is a ripoff or not, there's really only two approaches. You don't respond at all, or if you do respond, it's deny, 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 and then provide evidence for why you don't think it's Breath of the Wild, why you think it's just an inspired by game. Because it's okay to create games that are inspired by other games. That is a, a thing that happens in the industry and should continue to happen. It should be encouraged. But 
Anyways, I am kind of curious if the Operation Wind Cloud Island game does ever come over to U.S. For, to try it out because if if the, if the claims are true and people are calling it a Breath of the Wild ripoff, it might be one of the best mobile games on the market. <laughs> um, obviously, I don't know its monetization methods. I don't know how long it is or anything, but I definitely uh, seem interested in trying it out, at least based on the, the initial screenshot, which doesn't really tell you much. Again, looks like a selfie mode with a guy giving a peace sign some palm trees in the background. doesn't look that impressive, but... Um, I mean, Breath of the Wild with just a still image like that doesn't look that impressive. So you gotta, you gotta try it out for ourselves and see what happens. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys in this video. Um, I do want to make one quick note at the end here, as quick as I can make it anyways. Um, I, I do apologize for not appearing on camera much lately. Not getting prime news going again like I wanted to. Uh, I talked about this a little bit in the, in the comment section on a prior video. I have been sick the past handful of days. Uh, really, the past week, I've had a cold. It might not be coming through in this video. I think, uh, you know, I, I'm doing a good job of holding it in. But as soon as I'm done recording, there's going to be hacking at my lugs and blowing my nose and blah, blah, blah. And when I feel like this, I don't really like appearing on camera um, because I just don't, you know, I, I look washed out. I, look, I don't want people being concerned for my health just because I have a cold, right? Like, it's just not a thing that you need, you guys should really worry about. Um, we still are doing a podcast uh, recording and all that, and I'll be on camera for that uh, today. And then uh, I might be making a video on our Patreon. Uh, more on that later when I actually make that video. And on that, I'll be on camera. That might be after I take a nap and I get some color back in my face and then I, I don't look so sickly. Um, so uh, we can promote our Patreon because uh, it would be great to get that Patreon growing again and uh, help supporting what we do here at Nintendo Prime. All right, folks, that's it. That's all I got for this video. Um, hopefully by next week we'll be back to doing Prime News. How many of you guys miss Prime News? Raise your hand. All right, folks. <laughs> if you like the video, you know what to do. If you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more content, and I'll catch you in the next one.